Hello and welcome to another video of Python Automation Series. The Internet hosts the greatest source of information on the planet. In many areas such as data science and business intelligence can benefit from collecting and analyzing data from websites. This is why we need web scraping. Would you like to know how to scrape the Internet via Python? I will show you how in a very simple and easy way. What is web scraping really? Web scraping is an automated way of extracting and parsing data from the web using bots. Some of the most commonly used modules in web scraping are URL lib2, requests, beautiful soup, LXML, Selenium, and mechanical soup. But today we are going to use two of them, requests and beautiful soup. First, let's import requests. Requests is a simple HTML library enabling you to integrate your Python programs with web services. Requests allows you to send HTTP requests and you can add headers. I will tell you more about headers later with simple Python dictionaries and access the response data in the same way. The second library that we will need is beautiful soup and you need to install it in your terminal via pip install bs4. Beautiful Soup is a parsing library that creates a parse tree that can be used to extract data from HTML. Simply, it's a toolkit for dissecting a document and extracting what you need. Now, let us define our URL variable and set it to the website from which we want to extract our data. This website is an eBay website, and I would like to know about a certain price for a certain product. I will paste here the URL. To show you quickly what I mean, let's go to the browser and check out the product. It's Fossil Gen 4 Explorist HR Stainless Steel Smartwatch with a smoke color. The price is $316.59. What I want is to check that if this price drops below $400, I want to receive a message telling me that the price has dropped. Otherwise, I will return the same message saying that the price is still $400. Now we need to identify our headers. In HTTP headers, let the client and the server pass additional information with an HTTP request or response. And inside the headers, I have one key, which is the user agent. A user agent is a software that is acting on behalf of a user, such as a web browser that facilitates user interaction with web content. To get the user agent, we will need to use a website called whatismywebbrowser.com. Simply, you can go ahead and say, what is my web browser, my user agent? And you will click here. And there it is. This is your user agent. We will need to copy that. We need to turn back to our code and this is the value of the user agent key. Like so. Next, I need two variables, page and soup. Page will be equal to the requests module accessing the get method. And I want the URL and I'm setting the headers to the headers that we have defined above. Next, I will create a variable called soup. And this will be equal to beautiful soup module. And 
passing inside the content of the page that I would like to return. The second parameter is simply html.parser method. If you would like to see what soup looks like, I will show you in the terminal. Let's go ahead and open our terminal. Let's zoom out a little bit. And if you write print simply soup and you will run this program, let me show you if you will use the soup variable with the prettyfy method. If we'll do the same and we'll access prettyfy method. And now let's check out what will happen. Brilliant. Now let me show you what we want to do inside our eBay website. On the left side, we have our eBay website and on the right side, we have our web dev tools. If you're using Google Chrome, go ahead and hit F12. If you're using Opera like I am, go ahead and hit Control Shift and C. Let me tell you what we want to do in this program. We want Python to check on this exact page with the Fossil Gen 4 product with that price. But the price changes. So the last price that I have checked was $400. So I want Python to check on the website if the price has dropped from $400 and below to return a message telling me that the price has fallen. Else, nothing will change and the price is still $400, hence I cannot buy it. In order to do that, I will need either an ID or a class name for both the product title and the price. So let's go ahead and inspect first the title. If you'll click on select an element in the page to inspect it or simply Control Shift and C, and you will hover over the title and you will click, you will be directed to an H1 tag with a class name of product title and we will need that product title class name inside our Python code in order to retrieve the data associated with that exact product. Similarly, with the price, if you will click again on select an item in the page to inspect it and we'll hover over the price and we'll click, we'll have another class name of display price. Okay, now we understood the idea. Let's get back to our code. All right, now we need two variables, a product title and product price. The product title will be equal to the soup variable that we have defined above. We want to use the special method called find because we want to find a class name equals to product title and we want to get the text of that. The same exact syntax will be applied to the product price. So I'll copy the same syntax, but I will change instead of title, I will write product price. And here, instead of that class name product title, it's display price. Okay, great. Now let's see what Python can return us. First, let me comment that line out. Let me clear the terminal. And now, let's see. Perfect, we have the title and we have the price. The idea here is Python returns a string by default. We don't need a string because we will use that in our if else statement. 
so we'll need to parse that string into an integer. To do that, we will need to create a third variable. We'll call that variable product price value. And this simply will be an int for that product price variable that we have defined above. And as we want to omit the 0, 90, because we will not use float numbers for simplicity, we will need an integer only. And also we need to omit that dollar sign. So we will use an index from 1 to 4. Okay, now let's display that again, but instead of product price, we'll use product price value variable. And let's check that again. It has indeed omitted the dollar sign as well as the decimal points. We are almost done with our program. The last thing we need to do is to check the price of our fossil watch. To do that, we will need to create a function. We will call that function check price. Inside the check price function, we will have a simple if else statement to check. If the product price value is below $400, we will have a print statement saying congrats, the price has dropped to, and we will return the current product price value. Else, we will have another statement saying, sorry, the price is still $400. We'll concatenate with the product price value. Else, we'll have another print statement. We'll say, sorry. The price is still $400. All right, perfect. In order to finish that, we'll have our if name equals to main. And we'll invoke our check price function. Now let's clear the terminal. And let's run the program one more time. But before we do that, we'll comment these two lines out. All right, now let's see. Python main.py. And there you go. Congrats, the price has fallen to $313, which means that I can buy it. If we will change here and we'll say, I want the price to be less than $300. If this is the case, let's check out. We got a message saying, sorry, the price is still $400. All right, I hope you liked that video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.